Thanks for joining me today. We are going to uh, talk a little bit with, about with someone who I am very fond of as a, a teacher here at Tahoma High School. And we're going to talk a little bit about him today, about uh, his role in uh, the new move to the new high school. And, um, and he's here with us today. Mr. Hack, thank you for joining me. Hi, thank you. Okay. All right, so I'm going to, um, so you're very um, kind of special in this building. You kind of um, have been working here for quite some time. You know um, the history at this building. You know kind of how the students are and how the teachers are around here. And um, so it's basically, so I basically we're going to talk about three parts of this, which is, you know, the final months here. Um, the, what's happening during the big move to the new building, and then the third part is the what's to be expected, you know, for the first couple of weeks or the couple of months at okay. the new building. So sounds good. All right. <clears throat> so question one: When you think of Tahoma being here for forty years, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Um, the, I guess the first thing that comes to my mind is, oh my gosh, that means I've been here for half of its life because I've been <laughs> here for about twenty years. Um, but. Uh, you know, this building's been here for a long time. I was uh, I was here before they did the remodel of this building. Um, it's gone through a lot of changes, um, okay. and and it's really been kind of an iconic piece of Maple Valley and part of the Tahoma School District. Um, and that it's kind of the send off place for for kids after they've spent 13 years here in this district. So, I think it's uh, it served our district well. I think it served our students well. Um, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's time for a, a facelift, a t it's time for an upgrade so that we can really prepare our students for the uh, world and environment that they're going into. Mm -hmm. So let's go back in time for a moment. It's your first day working here at Tahoma High School. What were you feeling at the time? What was going on through your mind? Um, well, I was working with uh, some people who I really respected, who were who were great teachers. So one of the one of the first things that was going through my mind is just um, me living up to the expectations of of coming here, um, and and not letting down the people who uh, took a chance on me coming into this building. It was my uh, third year of teaching, so it's not like I had a ton of teaching experience. Um, my wife had already been teaching here for two years. Um, so it was just, uh, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of pressure being being in the classroom. You have kids in front of you who, who have expectations of you, um, as well they should, um, and you have expectations of yourself and others have expectations for you. So it's just that um, that nervousness of wanting to wanting to perform at your best and wanting, wanting to do the best that you can um, for those that are in front of you. Mm -hmm. After 40 years of making history in this building, how do you think the new student body that will be coming to the new building um, will have that responsibility to carry on that legacy and maybe some, some new ones? Yeah, I mean, you always want to memorialize where you came from. Um, I think that's really important. You never want to forget where where your past roots are. And I think that's one thing that's really cool about the new building. Um, once you get a chance to go in and see it and look at some of the architecture and look at some of the um, look at some of the artwork that's around um, and the way that they've done uh, benches, the way that they've done the artworks, the murals on the wall, it's all been to really say, hey, this is Tahoma High School. We're in Maple Valley. This is where we're from. This is where our history is. Mm -hmm. But we're preparing kids to go into the future. Um, so, uh, you know, it's just really important to think about always where you came from yeah. as well as where you're going. It's kind of an important part of it, yeah. Yeah. Um, how does it feel that knowing less than seven months you're going to be teaching um, in a new building with new students? Um, that part's really scary because when I think uh, everything that has to be accomplished just for me in seven months, let alone for our building and for the school district and, and, and all the staff, I mean, there's a lot to happen in this district in seven months. Um, for me, I just look at the fact that we get out of school on Friday and um, I, I can't even remember what that date is, but we get out of school on a Friday. Oh, yeah, on Tuesday, we have to have our grades turned out in and packed up and we're out of the building. Um, and that's that's pretty scary yeah. um, to think about when it's somebody uh, like video production or, or auto shop or our egg or you know some of these classes that have a lot of equipment and have a lot of uh, pieces to mm -hmm. them. Not only taking that down, 
but then you got to all build it all back up someplace else, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so it's it's pretty scary thinking about <laughs> what the next seven months are going to look like. Yeah. Um, how is the feeling you're going to be having when you open the new building compared to the one that you had when you um, started working here at this one? Um, you know, a lot of the same a lot of the same nervousness is going to be there because um, although I've been teaching for 20 years and I'm really comfortable, you know, with that aspect and being up in front of students and, and doing my thing in front of students, at the same time, um, our district, our administration, and even larger than that, our community has invested a lot and what we'll be standing in, and they have very high expectations for us. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that nervousness, and there's so much technology in there that's new, and um, you know, lots of classes, it's about the content. For us, yeah, it's about the content, but there's so much technology to what we do as well. Mm -hmm. So being able to learn all that technology so that then I can uh, utilize that to help the students learn and prepare them for, uh, for environments that they might go into, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, the nerves are still going to be there um, 20 years later, uh, yeah. just just like they were 20 years before. Yeah. But I walk into that building now, and you just walk in and you look at it, and you just get goosebumps on your arms, you yeah. know. So it'll be a you know that feel of excitement as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of memories do you think will be made here in the final months of this historical building? Um, I think one of our big goals is to really. Um, let the seniors feel where their part of history is at. Um, yes, there's a new class that'll get to start a new building, but they're the class that gets to shut down this building as a high school. Mm -hmm. um, so I think um, it's going to be really important in these final months to really let the seniors kind of simmer on that and feel that and, and be enlightened by that fact that, that they're a page in Tahoma in the Tahoma High School history that's that's not just a flip the page, but it's kind of you know almost like a whole new book. A, a whole book is closing, and we're going to open a new book. So um, you know they really get to to go out and put their own mark as we as we leave this building. Mm -hmm. um, what are your hopes for what will be expected from students and teachers as we get ready to close this building? I hope we go out with with the glory that this building really really deserves. Um, yes, we've we've outgrown, we've outlived, we've outlasted some of the parts of these buildings. I mean, our portables are falling down. Um, we have our auto shop and egg building that's in disarray. But as those things are going to be transitioned into the new middle school, mm -hmm. all that's going to go away. You know, what's going to be left at the core of this building is 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 all the good that was originally there. Um, you know, all that solid foundation and I think this building is going to provide a awesome opportunity for our middle school um, who's who's coming in and for and for those kids and for those for um, those staff members to really um, build and prepare their kids for moving on to the high school. So I don't want people to get caught up in where we're at currently, but because a lot of that stuff's going away. I want them to really see what this building has been, what it was meant to be, um, and what it will be again as we uh, take the growth issues out of it that we had and just bring it back to a solid educational facility. Yeah. Um, and what are you anticipating for the final months here at this building from um, before turning off the lights? <laughs> Chaos. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it really is. Now we're getting ready to go on spring break. When we come back from spring break, um, for the school itself, uh, we have all the state testing that happens. We have all the AP testing that happens. Um, we have all the We the People. We have robotic. All of that stuff. That's the normal chaos. And then you throw in the fact that teachers have and the and the building has to pack up and get out of here. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be crazy. Um, and for video production alone, I mean, this becomes a big season for us. We got the Northwest High School Film Festival going on. We have our Insomniacs Challenge going on. We have our film showing at the end of the year. And we got to pack everything up. And we got to keep announcements going. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to, I mean, it's going to be a rat race. You put on your running yeah. shoes and, and, and you run. And the seniors, we're going to get to the end, and the seniors are going to graduate and walk across the stage. And uh, the sophomores and juniors, we're going to we're going to be here. We're going to pack up, and we're going to start preparing for uh, what's going to be an awesome experience next year. Mm -hmm. 
And then so part two, which is the big move. So it's the last day of school. All the students are signing their yearbooks. They're getting ready to leave. What happens when that last bell rings? What is to come? I know you touched a little bit about this earlier. Um, so last day, the bell rings, students are walking out. We're already going to have some packing done. There's, we just don't have any choice in that matter and how that has to happen. Um, but it, it, at that moment, everything's going to have to be pulled together really quickly. So boxes is going to be organized, everything stacked. Um, in our video production lab, we have all the camera equipment, all the lighting equipment, all the audio equipment, all the computers. The desks in this room are going. Luckily, the chairs are staying. <laughs> um, but it's all got to be organized very, very quickly. Um, because like I said, that's on a Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Tuesday is it. Mm -hmm. Everything's out. So. Um, it's going to be really chaotic, and hopefully we're going to, um, you know, have some have some time coming down those last stretches to try and organize ourselves and get things straightened out, um, all in the same manner of keeping learning moving forward, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, because we teach, we work up to the to the last days, um, but that's that's going to be tough this year <laughs> with everything that's going on. So yeah. it'll be it'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. And then, so this question kind of connects to what you said, but what will the last day of school look like for you personally? Um, for me personally, it's just going to depend on how smooth everything goes leading up to that. Um, I mean, I have plans, I have visions, um, <laughs> but we have uh, we have graduation that we have to get out. So you know, graduation day, we go do a three camera shoot of graduation. We've got to get back. We've got to get that edited. We've got to uh, get that uploaded. Make DVDs if we need to, and and do all of that before we can finalize everything. Um, so. If, if that all go, has gone smoothly, then that will be done and taken care of. You know, hopefully um, we've uh, got a lot of our gear packed up, all of those things. But I would say when that bell rings, we're normally it's, you know, head to lunch, uh, you know, enjoy a little bit of relaxation before you come back and spend a few hours really trying to nail things down. And then you come back for one or two days after school's out and get everything packed up, get your grades done, everything. This is, I, I don't anticipate going to lunch. I don't anticipate, I just anticipate being in my room, focusing on what has to happen. And maybe that some of that might even be me hauling our, my gear up, some of my gear up that's um, that's more fragile. So I'm not quite so sure. I want to throw, um, you know, sixty, seventy thousand dollars worth of video cameras in the back of a U-Haul, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to have somebody else move up to the high school. So yeah. that might be me hauling those up there myself, so that I know that they're protected and that they're being treated the way they should, and <laughs> and that they'll be how I need them <laughs> when when we get there. Yeah. Um, what is the staff going to be doing uh, during the summer while the students are on vacation? <sighs> preparing. I mean, there's, uh, y yes, it's time for us to recuperate um, because, uh, you know, a nine-month school year where you're on 24-7, mm -hmm. um, you, you really get worn down mentally, physically. Hold on. Let's just stop that. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm sorry, well, you want to ask that one again? Oh, um, what, what's the staff going to be doing during the summer while the students are on vacation? Um, recovering, recuperating, and preparing. Um, you know, uh, a nine-month school year is—it's—it's it's tough. Um, you know, some people think it's think it's easy, but you're on. You know, if you're at school for nine hours, you're on nine hours. There's yeah. usually somebody in front of you every single every single moment. Um, so, a, it's a chance to mentally recover. Um, B, there's we have a ton of new classes happening, new curriculum, new adjustments. We're moving to Final Cut Pro. Um, so, all of that preparation of what's going to happen in those classes, learning that software. I mean, all of that happens during the summer, and we got to put our spaces back together. Yeah. Um, you know, my one of my real goals is hopefully if this works out, I want to have some of some of my advanced students who come up uh, and meet me during the high school or at the high school during during some of the summertime and help me get the studio together, help me get things put uh, put where they go. Um, a that's that's good real world training for them um, and B it helps them really understand the workings 
of the studio because they're the ones who are going to be managing it. Yeah. Um, so it's there's going to be a lot of work happening <laughs> over the summer, and not maybe not such scheduled work. Everybody's not going to be at work every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm going to take the time off that I need to take off, um, but at the same time, uh, while I have time off, another teacher may be in uh, working in their room, um, and while they have time off, I'll be in uh, in my room working and getting all the studio set up and all those things. So. Mm -hmm. Um, how will this summer for you be different compared to previous ones? I know you touched on that a little bit. <laughs> Just this summer will be overwhelming um, because there's so much change and you don't want to you don't want to let those kids who are sitting in front of you down. You mm -hmm. Day one you want to be prepared, you want to be moving forward. Um, next year we're going to be in 80 minute class periods. We're, we're losing time in every single class so we've got to be that much more sharp, that much more prepared yeah. to to get through the uh, information that we think is important. Um, and maybe some of the stuff that we've done comes out or transitions or whatever. It's not how can I pack 100 minutes into 80 minutes because uh, that's not good for the students. That doesn't help them in their learning process. But it's, it's okay, what might we be able to take out? What might we be able to shift to another class? Um, and. Uh, or how can we better teach this that might happen in a tighter time frame um, rather than spread it out. So lots of preparation that way um, for, for things to happen. Um, and, you know, like I said, all new, a bunch of new equipment mm -hmm. um, to figure out and to learn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you think the students will prepare themselves over the summer for going to um, the new building and how will you yourself? Honestly, I hope the students just go have fun on summer break. I mean, that's that's what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Because just like our job is tough, you know, we're here nine months a year, we're on all the time, the kids' job's tough too. Mm -hmm. um, I think anybody who, anybody who believes that uh, life is easy for kids in this day and age, um, I think they haven't been. <laughs> <laughs> with kids or a kid in this day and age because yeah. it's hard um, and the summertime is time for them to to recruit to recoup get their mind off their studies um, athletes hopefully give themselves some time for their bodies to recover I know there's lots of training that happens during the summer but but that's um, a time too when you need to let your bodies recover you need to let your minds recover um, so I hope they really uh, take the time to to rest to enjoy life to enjoy their friends to enjoy their family um, because come September, we're going to all be right back at it, and it's back to the job. Mm -hmm. um, and and students' job is to learn and to work and to focus here here at school, and that's going to be the expectation. Yeah. And then so the last question for this part is, what are you anticipating for the big move to the building, and um, whether or not you are involved in it or not? And I know you said you you're involved in it a little bit because you'll be there over the summer. Yeah. Um, I guess what am I anticipating? <laughs> I've really been trying to block it out, you know, <laughs> and, and not really, not really focus yeah, too much on it because it's so, it's so large. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, there's things that I can't really do because we're using everything. It's a you big, know? Pro it's a big project. Um, yeah. So you know, a lot of stuff will be just the organization of okay, what do I need to move? What's some of the stuff our technology department's going to move? Like all of our computers. I mean, we have a hundred thousand dollars worth of computers in here. They're all going to be moved by our technology department. So what am I going to move? What's our technology department going to move? And then what's the moving company going to move? And how is that all going to be organized and orchestrated? Um, that's the big, that's the multi-million dollar <laughs> question that I just kind of block out yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so the last part is at the new building. So what preparations are the staff going to be taking to prepare for the first week of school? Um, you know, the reality is we've been, uh, I'm going to start over because I think I, my hand was over my mouth. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is that, uh, <laughs> the reality is we've actually been preparing for three years. Um, we've been talking about new classes. We've been talking about processes. We've been talking um, about culture um, and climate in the building for ever since before this bond passed, really. Mm -hmm. um, and when you think about it, 
next year when we bring the um, ninth graders in with the new sophomores, half of our student body is going to be new. Mm -hmm. So half the students that are going to be walking around in that building have never walked around in a high school before. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but we're going to have about 30 to 35 percent new staff. Um, not because we had old staff leaving, but we're going to have all of the freshman staff mm -hmm. join us, which is about 25%. And then when we go to um, the eight period day, the four period you know, block schedule, mm -hmm. that itself drives new staff. So we're adding more teachers just to, just to fulfill that need, which I think is awesome for kids. Mm -hmm. um, but there's going to be a lot of new people in that building. So um, aside all, from all the individual work that's being done, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of work done in, okay, how, wh what's the culture of where we're going to be? What's this culture going to be like as a staff and then as a student and then a staff and student body together? You only get one shot yeah. to get that right. Um, and I think it's really, really important that we get it right. Yeah. Um, and by the way, that's what the whole Power Hour is hopefully designed to do and that they've really been working hard on on designing Power Hour to, to really bolster and, and bring a, a community together of our school and, and really try and build a strong culture right off the bat. 2,400 kids is a lot yeah, of people. You know, 2,400 kids put 150 to 175 uh, uh, certified teachers and uh, custodians and, and secretaries and all of those things in and it's a lot of people to bring mm -hmm. together. Yeah. Um, how do you think the student body will prepare themselves for the first day compared how to the teachers will? You know, as we, as we get closer to the beginning of the year, um, you know, we'll have some opportunities for the student body to come in to the school. Um, you know, I think it's going to be important that they come into the school, see the school, um, and f figure out how to navigate it. It's a big building, you know. There's like five or six different stairwells. Yeah. And um, there's there's things hidden and not not hidden but located in all kinds of different spots and corners. Um, and, and I think it's gonna be important for them to come in and just spend some time getting acquainted with the building. Um, there's also gonna be some awesome new technologies that are in the building that, that students are gonna have access to on an everyday basis. Um, and I think early on, maybe not before school starts, but early on, they want to figure out what those technologies are um, and how they can utilize them to help them uh, to help them in their studies and in their preparations and those kinds of things because uh, there's some cool areas in the school designed for kids to work together, mm -hmm. um, impl improve their collaboration, and um, just to create some cool atmospheres for them to, to work in that feel much more like a, like a creative corporate world environment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. <laughs> um, what steps are you going to take to adapt to the new environment, the building, or are you just going to instantly? <laughs> I don't think there's any instantly. Um, <laughs> you know, it's either it's either you try and get ahead of the game, or you get uh, slapped by the game <laughs> as it happens. <laughs> one of the two. You know, so um, you know me and and almost everybody I I know they're they've been thinking for two years. You know, how's this going to impact our programs? How's it going to impact our classes? What's it going to be like? Um, what, what's it going to be like to have freshmen in our classes? You know, um, what's it going to? What do we have to change in our curriculum, um, you know, there's going to be some things that they haven't that they haven't been exposed to yet. Some um, study skills, some study habits, um, those kinds of things that sophomores had been exposed to. Freshmen aren't going to be exposed to that. So how are we going to have to adapt our classes to that? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think we've all been doing a lot of thinking about a huge amount of, you know, a, a lot of things. Um, you know, it's some of the things that you don't think about that come right down to it is, uh, you know, when you look at things like, well, we have to be ready for emergency procedures. You know, fire drills. Who's gonna Who's gonna make a fire drill map? Who's gonna say who goes where? You know, when does that happen? Uh, I mean, those. That's just one little small example. You know, there's tons of things like that, and all the time, people are sitting around talking and going, oh man. Have we thought about this? Um, so some things are going to slap us upside the head. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just like we're going to end the year in chaos. Um, 
I don't anticipate starting the year in chaos, but there's going to be a lot of things that work really well, mm -hmm. and there's going to be things that that don't, and and it's going to be a time for uh, modification and adjustment. Um, the reality is, it's going to take a solid three years to nail everything down and get everything working, kind of like a well-oiled machine. Um, there's going to be gives and takes. There's going to be gives and takes by administration, by staff, by students. Um, some things are going to be great, we're going to love it, and other things are going to be, wow, I don't like that, but it's what has to happen for, um, for success to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of steps do you think the juniors and seniors will have to face when it comes to getting used to getting around the new building's architecture? Um, a, a, getting... I think it'll be important for, for the juniors and seniors and everybody to get familiar with the building. Like I said, there's so much crazy stuff. Um, I'm excited because our video production classroom for years has been buried in the back of Tahoma <laughs> High School. I have kids in my room go, oh, I've never even known that this room existed before, that we had this, this kinds of capabilities. Yeah. In our new building, we're going to be front and center. <laughs> People will be able to see in through the windows, see what we do. But that means there's other programs that aren't front and center. For example, like our sports medicine program. They're way back in the corner, back past the gyms in a back hallway. Great facility, fabulous program, great teachers in there. Um, but if kids don't orient themselves with what's going on, it's a big building. And, and if that's not a focus, they'll walk in there their senior year going, oh, wow, I didn't even realize we had this cool facility. You know, there's going to be awesome sports tables in there, um, uh, ice bath whirlpools, you know, all of those kinds of things that anybody who's interested in that health occupation world really wants to see and think about. Um, so I just hope people take the time to get to know the whole building. Uh, one of the good things was, is with the eight-period day is hopefully it allows people to explore a little bit more than what they've been able to in the past, so they'll get to be more acquainted with things that they haven't been in the past. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of environment do you think the building will be like with the two added classes, meaning the freshmen and sophomores? Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh, my, my mind automatically went to the two added classes in the eight period day rather than the six period day. Uh -huh. um, you know, it, it's adding the sophomores is not a big deal because that happens every year. Yeah. It's happened every year for the last 40 years, right? Mm -hmm. And actually, this building at one time, there were freshmen here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't remember. I think it was just before I came, so it was 22 years ago, I think, when the freshmen were here, um, and uh, about that time they separated out due to space issues. Yeah. We just couldn't house the freshmen here, so they had to find some other uh, paths to put them in. But we've had freshmen in our building before. Um, it's it's a different environment, and people are going to have to adjust to that. Um, you know, there's going to be kids who uh, who are 14, you know, 14, 15 years old here, and we're not used to having that in the environment. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to take seniors understanding that, respecting that, and helping them. Yeah. Um, and it's going to take staff also understanding that and respecting that and making adjustments within their classroom to fit that environment. Um, in the end, it'll it'll take some adjustment. Um, it'll take some adjustment in the beginning, but in the end, uh, lots of school systems have nine through twelve uh, programs, and it, you know it'll become normal. We just have to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of um, what kind of steps will be will there be taking to introduce? Uh, the freshmen sophomores to high school life while also at the same time getting adapted to being at the new building as well you know I can't I can't say exactly what steps uh, are in process because I'm just not involved with that one thing with with this being such a huge process of making this transition um, we've really put together some some strong committees and subcommittees and those kinds of things that are working on on different things and I'm not on any committees that have to do with that what I can say is um, 
I know that uh, our leadership team um, and our leadership students are going to be working really hard to find ways to get everybody included in what's happening and to welcome them um, before school starts and in those first few weeks of school, trying to get everybody oriented. Um, I know the, the whole concept of Power Hour. Um, we've got some great teams that have been student, there's students on it, there's parents on it, there's community members on it, um, as well as teachers and, and administrators, but really looking at how can we utilize that time to build community um, and support kids because um, you know the reality is we have a lot of kids that are failing classes um, how do we support those kids without piling more work on them there, there's um, you know we really want to be able to support them and lift them up mm -hmm. so how can we utilize the time to do that as well as utilize the time um, to help kids be involved those kids who don't need that lift up what what kind of enrichment activities can we provide them mm -hmm. um, so that they can grow during that time as well yeah um, how will the returning students meaning the juniors and seniors so like for example I'll be a senior returning next year uh, be able to get well known with the building while at the same time helping the freshmen and sophomores out <laughs> Part of it's going to be the juniors and seniors um, taking the initiative. You know, you can show up day one, stumble in the door and go, all right, I'm here. What do you got for me? <laughs> you know, but the reality is what we need is we need our juniors and seniors to be leaders. We need our se juniors and seniors to sign up, to, to show up before day one and say, hey, show me what's going on. Talk to me about, and some, some of those kids have already been involved in things, you know, but to say, I want to help. I want to be involved. I want to be part of building this community. We only got one shot at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There'll be times where um, they can, during August, where there'll be things that they can come in and start learning and start supporting and start being involved. But we can't reach out to 600 or 1,200 kids. Those kids have to, have to want to be involved and have to reach out and say, hey, I'm here. I want to be involved. Um, so that's, that's going to be it. It's, it's part of growing up and taking the initiative to do things rather than wait for somebody to bring something and lay it on your plate. Yeah. Um, so if, if there's kids out there who want to be involved, I come forward, see Mr. Peters, see, uh, see Boomer, see Mr. Duty. There's all kinds of places where we can get student involvement and we want student involvement. Um, and, and we want a, we want a well-rounded group of kids you know mm -hmm. uh, I want a group of video production kids who want to show kids the video production room we want a group of uh, kids who enjoy auto shop and auto mechanics to want to show off that room we want our CAD kids to show off that our robotics kids we want our foreign language kids to show off uh, their foreign language rooms and the, and the new facilities that they have outside their rooms to collaborate and work together mm -hmm. um, so it's not like we're just looking for this group of ASB leaders you know to kind of take everything we want kids to go out who have interests in areas focus in those areas and and welcome kids to them mm -hmm. how do you see the first couple of weeks at the new high school looking like busy <laughs> <laughs> busy um, you know because like I said th there's gonna be things that work well there's gonna be things that don't um, uh, we might have to make some adjustments right off the bat um, who knows when uh, I don't know what they're playing. I don't know if, if they're playing seven minute passing time, eight minute passing time. I don't currently know. Um, I think they've finalized the schedule. I just don't know it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if they've planned seven minute passing time and all of a sudden they go, students can't make it, you know, then we're going to have to make some adjustments mm -hmm. probably. And you don't know that. It's one thing for me to stand in one corner of the building and walk all the way down to the other corner of the building and go, okay, that took me four minutes. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to do it when there's 2,400 kids in your way. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and you don't know that until you're in that moment. Yeah. So it's going to be a lot, of, a lot of adjustment, a lot of, you know, um, a lot of, you know, give and take. Um, hey, this works well. This, this doesn't work well, um, and how can we manipulate that? And again, that's going to be on everybody's part. That's going to be on the student's part, the teacher's part, the administration's part, the parents and community's part. You know, The other thing that we're going to have that we've never had before is when juniors and seniors on day one can walk off campus and go eat lunch. You know, 
we, we don't know how that's going to go. Mm -hmm. Our community doesn't know how that's going to go. Can you imagine being one of those restaurants right there? You know, are you going to have 800 kids show up at your door at noon or whatever time it is? Um, or are you going to prepare for 800 kids and two show up? <laughs> Yeah. You know, you just don't know what's what's going to happen mm -hmm. until it happens. So it's going to be a time of flexibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, as the year progresses, how do you think the staff and students will begin to get used to this transition? Um, they'll get they'll get used to the building. They'll get used to uh, the time frame of classes. Uh, they'll get used to you know the athletic facility. Everything will just start to happen. You know, um, it's just like any transition. There, there's so many transitions that happen in a person's life, um, and this is just one of those transitions. Uh, not very many students get to experience this transition. There's lots of learning lessons here, um, but we haven't. We've been in this building for 40 years. For 40 years, there haven't been any students who have gotten the ability to learn any of these lessons that are going to be learned, right? Yeah. So there's a small window to take advantage of teaching some things that we normally wouldn't uh, have the opportunity to. So this gives us that, that opportunity. Hopefully, we take advantage of those opportunities. Um, hopefully, the kids take advantage of those opportunities. And, uh, and as the year goes, we just start to settle in to what's what's a routine um, but never forget the fact that we need to keep that culture we, we we're building something um, because you have to always intentionally work at building things if you're not intentionally working at it it's not going to happen mm -hmm. um, in the long run how will the student body become more adapt to the new environment as well for the teachers and staff um, I think the new environment will become part of everyday life. Uh, like I said, there's going to be some great collaboration areas, but those areas are going to be open, um, you know, pretty much before school, after school, during each class at power hour. So, for example, there's like six of these um, of these collaborated collaborating learning environments that are kind of in these big open hallway spaces where there's a 55 inch TV there's going to be some some more comfortable student seating um, those kinds of things and students can walk up and plug their laptop in and boom whatever they have is being displayed to that whole that whole group We've never had that opportunity or that access before. Um, you're planning a uh, PowerPoint presentation for uh, a history class. Now you've got everybody sitting right there in a comfortable environment talking about what you're doing. You see it all on a big screen rather than five people trying to huddle around a little laptop screen going, okay, what are we going to do next? You know, Getting used to having the ability to do those things, mm -hmm. that's going to take a little bit of time, but eventually it's going to become natural yeah. to do those things, um, and that's where we want to get. We want to get to the point where things are things are natural for for the students and the staff to take advantage of all of these cool things that have been implemented. Yeah. All right. And then the last question is: What are you anticipating uh, September 2017 to look like in the 2017-18 school year? Say we read it, say that again. What are you anticipating for September 2017 to look like in the 2018, 17-18 uh, school year? Um, I, I just think it's going to be a it's going to be an exciting time. Um, it's going to be a crazy time. It's going to be a chaotic time. Um, but I think most of all, it's going to be fun. You know, what a, what a great place to be. We've got a, a great community. We've got great students. We've got great parents. Um, we've got an unbelievable staff and now a beautiful new, new building. Uh, I couldn't ask for, you know, the reality is, is I've got eight years left until I can retire. Not that I'll retire at the end of those eight years, but how could I ask for a better way to, to go out in a career? I mean, you just, it's kind of one of those, uh, undefinable moments, mm -hmm. you know, in, in time for you, I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I would like to touch on really quick, and I don't know if you'll, if there'll be room, but um, I, I want to uh, touch on somewhere the importance of, um, of the respect of the building and of the environment mm -hmm. and understanding what, 
what students and and staff have, and making sure that um, that, that maybe that's part of the legacy of every year yeah. and what they leave leave off, mm -hmm. um, uh, because if students treat that building the way they treat this building, it's not going to be long before it's you know not some place to be proud of yeah. any longer. Um, so I don't know how. Um, how we want to lead into that, but I would like to say something and see if it fits yeah. into anything mm -hmm. that you have. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> maybe the question is something about, um, you know, how do the juniors and seniors start to build their legacy for what they're going to leave in the new building? Yeah. Maybe. Do you want to ask something like that, and then I'll. Yeah. Sure. Um. I'm <laughs> so so basically, yeah. um, y y the the juniors and seniors who are moving into this new environment yeah. next year. Um, you know they're going to be starting a new legacy, really, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what might that legacy look like or feel like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that would be kind of the question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So actually, you don't even have to ask it. I'll, <laughs> I'll just, um, I'll say. Um, so as the juniors and seniors start to um, think about. Uh, what type of legacy they want to build for next year um, and and what they want to leave. I think one of the most important things for them to think about is um, this great facility they have, this beautiful building. How does it stay that way over the years? Mm -hmm. how, how do we keep it that way? Um, and I think a lot of it's going to be around just respecting what you have in front of you, just respecting the opportunities that you've been given and respecting that environment and holding each other accountable. Yeah. Um, and I think that's going to be important as we move forward in, uh, in, our, in our history with this, with this new building and how we keep it, um, how we keep it beautiful and pristine and, and, and exciting for each class that comes yeah. through over the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining me. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. You're welcome. Me. Thank you.